Welcome back. This week's episode is a continuation from last week, where we covered the history of vocal pedagogy in order to gain a better understanding of how singing lessons evolved. If you're not sure or you missed that episode, check it out first. In fact, if you are new here or you just forgot to do so, take a moment to subscribe, like and share the video. Don't forget to press the notification bell to get notified when new episodes come out. This week we are tackling the hot topic, self-learning versus instructed lessons. In order to give you a balanced perspective of both sides, the video will be slightly longer than usual. I will look at the pros and cons of self-learning, followed by the pros and cons of singing lessons, concluding with where I stand. Based on my experiences as a student and teacher, this is all my opinion. It is not prescriptive, but I hope it serves as a guide for many who want to explore the world of singing. So, grab a snack, sit back, and enjoy. Now, let's move on to the next part of this episode, looking at self-learning versus learning with a teacher. Here I'm going to try my very best to be fair and provide a balanced view of both. I will look at both the benefits and limitations of each and conclude with my opinion. A great word that comes to mind with self-learning is autodidacticism. As singers, we are constantly going through forms of self-directed learning, especially to accommodate the versatile demands of singing today. Many singers have trained in a particular genre during their school and university years, but find themselves having to delve into other genres to generate more income or as a means to sustain a relevant reputation within the industry. Additionally, they're expected to build up repertoire constantly. So self-directed learning is inevitable for the modern singer. So it is safe to say that most singers find themselves becoming their own teacher as a means of survival. But on the other hand, there's also people that would like to know how to sing as beginners. So they also embark on the journey of learning how to sing on their own. So without wasting much time, let's identify the pros as well as the cons of self-learning. Starting with the pros. The first point is you are your own teacher. This is a rather empowering thing as you assume the role of a teacher. You can determine the content, pace and extent to which you want to learn. Cheaper. The previous point leads into this one. Self-learning eliminates the cost of a teacher as well as transport to get there. As a self-learner, you are likely to spend on acquiring resources in the form of books or apps. But this doesn't compare to shelling out for weekly lessons, bearing in mind some attend multiple times a week. Convenience. You can determine the venue and times you want to learn when you're learning on your own. Oftentimes, some students with teachers have to travel far for lessons or attend lessons at the most inconvenient times due to the teacher's availability. So, being your own teacher is just so, so convenient. Like worthy repertoire. This hits home for me a little bit. You will always get to pick your own repertoire and it's repertoire that you actually like. Teachers on the other hand will often pick your repertoire basing it on developmental purposes or for purposes of your ensemble group or it's prescribed in the sort of syllabus that you're following and that may not be favored by the student. Therefore, as your own teacher, you will likely choose agreeable repertoire also agrees with your personal style. Now, let's explore the cons. Obviously, there will be an overlap with the pros of singing lessons, so I will not go into too much depth here. Lack of prior knowledge. Undeniably, most music instrumental teachers are armed with formal training and experience, which equips them to teach effectively. As an autodidact, you are constantly being thrust into a role you aren't prepared for. Like, let's be honest. This means that your efficacy may be limited or challenged as you have to figure things out first. Moreover, the lack of expertise may affect your progress and in some cases may result in faulty technique, aka bad habits. May require troubleshooting as a non-expert. This point leads on from the first point in the sense that lack of expertise means that if you're facing a serious challenge learning parts of a song, 
you will be forced to spend more time trying to come up with a solution, shifting the focus away from learning to problem solving. That's incredibly stressful and way too much pressure for a non-expert in my opinion. Also, as a teacher, I've experienced how due to the fact that each student has a unique voice with a unique set of issues, I'm constantly forced into modes of troubleshooting, especially where technique is concerned. Some students need more attention than others, so I can't just apply a one-size-fits-all model, which ties in with the next point. The one-size-fits-all model. This pertains to the idea that if you pick up a book on how to sing or watch videos on how to sing, that it will automatically make you a good singer in a limited space of time, let's say. Of course, there are fundamentals to singing, but every voice is unique in texture and ability. So beyond the basics, each individual needs to hone in on the specific areas in need of work to develop a sound vocal technique. In my opinion, self-learning can help you establish the basics, but may not be able to help you adequately with tackling specific issues or advanced forms of singing. This is important because again, this leads to faulty technique and even injury in extreme cases. In my opinion, self-learning can help you establish the basics, but may not be able to help you adequately with tackling specific issues or advanced forms of singing. The lack of awareness and feedback. Now, this is a hard-hitting truth, but very necessary. Isolated learning may result in a lack of awareness of your actual capability as a singer. A teacher provides the necessary accountability and feedback, as well as giving you a dose of reality regarding your progress. Now. For me personally, I must admit when I was trying to learn on my own in my younger years, there was hardly any reality. And it's only when I started attending formal singing lessons with a teacher, that's when I began to see exactly where my voice was. But also, I got a picture of what my voice could become. Biased. Isolated learning also means that you have a biased opinion of your singing. So it may be difficult to hear that intonation problem maybe whenever you engage in a mixed belt, for example, or your overuse of vibrato in a musical theater piece, if you catch my drift. I think that we forget as your own teacher, everything is based around your ideologies, your feelings, your, your affect, your emotions. So therefore, obviously it's like, a hundred percent biased it is literally biased unless you are getting feedback from others around you but most of us don't because let's face it we're learning to sing in the comfort of our room and also we often choose the sort of perfect setup to sound great like the bathroom for example where the acoustics are a little bit better than a normal room reliance on inadequate resources now, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but hear me out. Singers of today are spoiled regarding the development of learning resources. From a plethora of singing books to a number of apps and videos splattered across platforms like YouTube, which have provided a space for people to teach themselves. That is great. However, some of the materials nearly scratch the surface, giving you sort of the basics, the foundations which is not suitable for developing like really advanced skills. With regards to the apps, some of the tracks, which are obviously pre-recorded, mixed even with a little bit of auto-tune, is a little bit problematic if you think about it. Because the voice that they use to demonstrate these exercises, if it is auto-tuned, is not actually a true reflection of the normal voice. So this obviously puts a little bit of pressure on the students to try and sound like that voice which has obviously been mixed in the studio. And sometimes people don't even realize that it has been mixed in the studio to sound like that. So, again, in a live setup with your teacher, you're able to hear a more organic and natural sound. So, what am I saying? There are a number of resources that do give us the sort of kickstart to learning but will they guarantee us great singing success that will lead us to become champions in the art? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. So, what am I saying? There are resources out there. They really do help. If you can't afford a teacher, of course, they're very 
incredible in giving you the necessary foundations, but some of them are totally inadequate for you to develop really solid, advanced singing skills, like you would if you were with a mentor in the form of a teacher. Next point, discipline. One of the challenges of self-learning as we have all probably experienced in different ways is discipline. I'm well aware that practicing is a very difficult endeavor, especially if you're not a disciplined individual. A lack of discipline will make it difficult to be your own teacher as there is no real outside accountability or motivation. So I feel that self-learning really works when you're accountable to outsiders who will constantly check up on your progress, try and see what you're doing and always encouraging you to keep on. But if you're doing it in isolation, which is what most people probably do, it's hard to keep the momentum and the consistency.